Hello there, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to render a 3D sphere all from scratch in Adobe Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and I've created a new document, a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the toolbar on the left and grab the ellipse tool and just left click and hold shift to draw a circle and then from the properties panel if you don't see that just go to window and down to properties you can then specify a color for your circle and we'll just remove that stroke so we'll set that to none so we just have a blue circle now you can change the color of this circle by just double clicking on the thumbnail in the layers panel and you can change it to whatever you like. I think I'll stick with blue for the time being. And we'll position that in the center so we have our circle. Now the next thing we're going to do is hold down Command or Control on the keyboard and hover over the thumbnail. And you can see when I hold down those keys, this little icon appears next to the hand and I can left click and it makes a selection of that circle. So now we're going to add a new layer from the bottom of the layers panel. In fact, we're going to add two. So we're going to call one of these shadows and you can rename the layer just by double clicking on the text and we'll call the next one highlights. So we'll start on the shadows and from the color picker, we're going to go and select a color. Now we're not gonna go for black all the way in the bottom left corner. We are actually going to click on the blue and then just go straight down from there. So rather than go for black, we're gonna go for a very, very dark blue. This just helps this shadow and the highlight that we're going to add just hang together a little better than a complete straight black. So next we're going to grab the brush tool and use one of Photoshop's soft round pressure brushes. These are part of the default brushes and you can adjust the brush size nice and quickly using the left and right square brackets on your keyboard. And I'd recommend something nice and big for this. So with the shadow layer selected, our almost black color and the brush tool, we're just going to do something like this. Now, if you make a mistake, just go edit and undo. And we'll do this a few times, just until I get the right amount of shadow that I'm happy with. So for this shape, our light source is going to be up here in the top right corner. So it's casting a shadow on this shape. Okay, so I'll go with something like this. Now we've still got this selection made here, so I'm going to switch over to the highlights layer. And from the color picker, again, sample this blue, but we're gonna go up. And you can even adjust the hue ever so slightly as well. And then click okay. So we're not going to go for just pure white. Now for the highlight, we're going to want something slightly smaller and we can left click a few times try a few different sizes out and I'm just using that edit command or control Z shortcut just to undo but remember the light source is up here so this is casting a highlight here and you can even add another highlight layer just go a little bit brighter a bit smaller so it's a little bit more intense and okay so I'll call this highlight 2 so we've got a couple of different highlights one that's a bit more subtle and then highlight two which is a little bit a little bit more harsh and i'll just bring the intensity down just by dropping the opacity slider but you can add as many different shadows and highlights as you like just kind of layer this up to just give it some more realism so we've got everything that makes up our circle now something else we're going to do is add a shadow so if we click on our bottom layer that's our background layer and we'll add a new layer under everything else we're going to left click and grab the elliptical marquee tool. And we're just going to drag out something like this, a really th uh, thin ellipse. And you can see that selection has been made. And we're now going to sample, we'll sample black to start with. So all the way in the bottom left corner, and then just grab the brush tool or the paint bucket tool and just fill it with black. And then go to select and deselect to deselect that selection. And of course, make sure that this is central. 
Then we'll double click on the layer name and call this shadow. And if we right click this, we can convert this to a smart object. Now the reason we do this is because when we start applying blur using filter effects, if we apply it to a normal layer that isn't a smart object, anything we apply will be permanent. However, because this is a smart object, if we start applying, let's say a Gaussian blur and click OK, it now becomes listed as a smart filter. So we can turn this off, we can turn it on, we can drag the smart filter to the trash. We've got a whole bunch of different options. And we can then double click on the Gaussian blur and just go back in and adjust it. So I do like to use smart objects quite a lot. Even if they do increase the power needed by your computer and your file size, they're definitely worth it because it gives you that extra level of flexibility. So we've added a blur there. Now I'm now going to add a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel to the shadow layer because at the moment the shadow is pretty consistent all the way across. So if I just show you how this works, So we have our light source at the top here. It's casting a light, it's coming down, we have a shadow. In fact, this probably would even be a little bit off to one side, but we'll keep this just central for the sake of this tutorial. So the distance here between the shape and the shadow is quite short. So the shadow is going to be a lot darker. As we move along, the distance here becomes a little bit greater so as this curve moves up, so this part of the shadow will need to become softer. And as we go out even further, the distance will incrementally increase to the point where the shadow is no longer visible. So if I just keep that layer there for the moment, if we go back to our shadow layer and select the mask, we can use that brush tool again with black as our foreground color and that soft brush. And we can just start to brush in from the edges. So I like to use quite a big brush for this and I'm just single left clicking on the end point. And you can see now we've effectively created that graduation. It's a lot darker in the center. And as we move out, you can see it gets a lot fainter. So now what we can do with the shadow layer selected is we can go to edit free transform and we could hold alt and we can adjust the size. Don't worry about how it looks while you're adjusting it. Just press return and it will render. Or you could make this really, really narrow. Or we could move this off to one side. Or we could even make it a bit narrower in terms of height. And of course we want to position this so the shadow actually sits underneath the sphere as well. And then when you're happy, you can even adjust the opacity. I like to keep mine at 100% though personally, and then make any adjustments to shadow strength using that mask. So maybe doing something like this and adjusting it that way instead, but that's just me personally. Okay, so something else I like to do as well is I'm going to select my ellipse and right click and select convert to smart object. Now at the moment, this is perfectly sharp. This is a vector shape that we created inside Photoshop after all, but it's just a bit too sharp. So I'm going for something a bit more photorealistic. So I'm going to go to filter and blur and then use either blur or blur more. It honestly depends on the size of your circle. And this just adds a bit of subtle blur to the edge that you get around say a subject or something in a photo. Photos just don't look perfectly, perfectly sharp. So for me, it just adds that bit of realism. And if you do get a little little bit of a highlight or an, a bit of ed, uh, fringing around the edge here on your shadow, just nudge it down once using the down arrow key. And then something else we can do as well is we can hold command or control on this original ellipse shape and on top of absolutely everything we'll create another new layer and from the color picker select black and then we'll grab the paint bucket tool and fill this with black and then just deselect that selection 
and then go to filter, noise, add noise. And you'll see it does something like this. Now you can adjust the amount of noise as you like. And I've got the distribution set to Gaussian and monochromatic checked. Click OK. And we can change the blending mode to something like overlay or soft light. And it looks like this, which isn't great. But then we can adjust the opacity and bring this down. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is I like to have this set very, very low. But similar to in a photograph, you're of course going to get some level of noise. This just makes it look ever so slightly more realistic. Just you're adding that bit of noise rather than having everything be just too perfect. And we can double click this layer and call it noise. Now some of the things like adding the noise, the shadow, the subtle changes we're making, layering up multiple highlights or shadows, these are all very subtle changes. But when you add all of these subtle changes together, it ultimately adds up to a much more realistic end result. So I'm actually going to add another shadow. So again, we'll hold Command or Control to make a selection of that ellipse. And I'm going to select the dark shadow we've got at the moment and go even darker and just use that brush tool to just brush around this bottom edge here. And we could drop the opacity a few percent if it's just a little bit too strong. And we'll start naming these. So we've got shadow one and shadow two. And it's always a good idea to name your layers because this can get incredibly complicated uh, if you don't. Maybe just drop that down to 80%, a little bit more and the shadow as well. Now we've created all of these shadows and highlights and our ellipse color using different shades of blue, whether it's light, whether it's dark, whereas our shadow we created with just straight black. So if we select our shadow layer from the adjustments icon at the bottom of the layers panel, we're going to add a solid color. Now we can just pick any shade of blue. It doesn't really matter too much. We'll go for something around here and click OK and we'll set the blending mode from normal to color. And you can see it applies this to the black shadow layer that's below it and it makes the shadow very blue. Now this is of course completely unrealistic, but we're gonna drag the opacity slider all the way down. So we'll start at zero and we'll just slowly bring this up and you can see it just brings back in a little bit of color from the object reflecting off the floor. And this is a useful technique that can help blend together your shadows. So we had a straight black shadow before. And we've just added 15% back in. If I just zoom in and show you this. So this is how it looked. And you can even drop it down a little bit lower. So again, it's another very subtle change. But it's one of those subtle changes that when you add all of them up together, it ultimately just creates a much more realistic end result. And there we go. We're done. And there we go. That's how to render a 3D sphere all from scratch in Photoshop. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.